for the demo, I'm going to start off with a mobile app. Okay, and I'll send it over to a different screen. So as you see, my mobile app should be showing for you now. And I'll show you how I executed that. We've got mobile apps for Windows and you know mobile devices and tablets, and we also support iOS and Android. So I'll just launch my ShareFile app here. I've got a dashboard, recent activity of what's going on on my account, whether I've uploaded, downloaded, I've got them, you know, some activity going on on the recent access to my documents and folders. I've also got a, a place called personal folders and that's somewhere where I want to create my own files and folders and structure. I can share from here. I can set up folders permanently with someone internally, externally. Um, I could just grab a bunch of documents on the fly without needing a VPN and gives me the ability to share it. With my demo account, I've locked it down. Every time I share from my account, I need authentication. So that person outside the company needs to authenticate before they can access my, my data. We have got different levels of access for those URLs. We can leave it anonymous and have those options for the user to choose whether they want to grab a link and send it on an IM or an email. But I find that locking it down is, is nice because I get a good audit trail of who's accessing my data, the times, the logs, the email address, and that right person who had to authenticate. Um, so let's say I send it out to someone here. Um, I can also put some wraparounds on those. As you see that button there was grayed out. I can't select that to turn it off or on because I forced it. I might want to pull down some different options here. And this is where I kind of want to show you that full control means that person can download it and keep it. View online, I'm going to provide them a view only link to the file to view it. Um, and this instance, you know, I could happily do that, for example, like that. Or if you saw those, those in between, I wanted to kind of talk around those briefly, but we've got three policies here, which are information rights management policies. And what that means is that I can apply an encryption on the file itself. So ultimately, when that person outside my company downloads the file, it encrypts the file puts a watermark on it. And if I decide to revoke access to that file later on, the person who's got it on their laptop offline who thinks that they've got full access to it, it renders the file useless to them. They can't open it, they can't decrypt it. So this is for ultimate belts and braces of security of, I want control of that document, even if someone downloads it because of sensitivity. And, and what, what is nice is that I can also say, that's going to last a day. So I don't have to revoke access to that file. After one day, that person tries to access it the next day and it will be rendered useless again. So what we did, we lined up all the policies with our information rights management solution within ShareFile. And also I can give one access. So they download the file, they access the file, they look at it, they close it down, they try to access it again. It's rendered useless. Um, but for this instance, I will just put the full control option on there. And, all, and also th this option here always links to the latest version of the file. So if you want to send a link out to one of your partners and don't want to be sending them a link every day or every other day, and you know this file is going to change on a daily basis internally, you can send them a dynamic link. You can also say, well, I want them to have that version at that point in time. Of that file i don't want them to have the latest version so we, we enabled that in the web interface and our tool sets as well by default i always want to be notified when someone accesses my file i want to be notified if they've previewed it i want to be notified if they've downloaded it so i'll send that externally and say please thank you auto correct excellent and i share that file now and i'm not sharing the files out and then, you know, directly, you know, ultimately sending a hyperlink to those files um, rather than sending out the files themselves. So they download it from me. I'm not sending it through a send item mechanism here with attachments like we do on email. So going down to the shared folder area, 
I've got a bunch of shared folders and I might want to have these as my departmental shares. And the good thing about shared folders is that if I'm working on customers or partners or you know data that my colleagues need to see as well and interact with, well, I'd rather probably set up permanent folders from this location here. So I can press the plus and create a folder and you know external partner as you know call it external partner one so we're going to create a folder this is going to be an external partner i'm going to be collaborating with so you just for the sake of it let's you know, i was going to copy a document over but what i'm going to do instead i'm going to create a file so what you see you see these these options here we've got the opportunity to record audio so if you want to dictate audio into that folder we can do uh, we can also just create a file and we've got three options so what we did we built um, we built our uh, an editor or what was probably we, we put an editor inside the share file app we've had it for over five years um, and so we've had an editor for the iOS and Android for people to be able to create documents create presentations and edit as well without exiting the app so I can say new dot here as a sample. If I close that, I can click save and I can rename that file to something that I want. It's, yeah, let's just give it a nice long name of, yeah. Okay, and I'll upload that. So that, that's good. That will upload and I've got a new document in the external partner. I can share from there, but what I like to do is let's get that external partner, which I sent to earlier, which I'm using a Gmail account for sending things outside my company, just as a demo. Um, so I'm gonna get that person outside. I'm gonna add them on permanently rather than sending them links every other day to a file. And I'm gonna be able to make them um, have some abilities here of, you know, I'm gonna allow them to, so I won't allow them to download documents from there. I'll allow them to view and I'll allow them to upload back to me any documents that they wish to contribute there. So you've got the granularity of, of setting different folders for different things with your external partners. So they've got the ability to upload to you or just view content or just view or download content only. Um, I also want them to be notified when I change content in that folder rather than me sending them an email saying, hey, you know, there's another link to something. I want them to be automatically notified. So I'll click done, back up there, and then I say, welcome. Okay, and we'll add that on there. So now what I've done is I've created a folder, created a file, I've added someone permanently to the folder, all from the mobile app. And also, you know, I can on the fly just grab that document here um, yeah, I can just grab it like this and I can either open it in Microsoft Word or we can block that out. If you just want to keep editing within the app itself to just stop people sending it out to, of the application from mobile. Um, I can click edit again. What happens? It brings that file down into my local editor and I can add some more edits. Close, save. Or I can do a save as if I want to you know, change it and point it somewhere else. So all in from the mobile app. Now, going over from what you know, Mark mentioned as well about the different repositories um, and also the network shares, which I see pretty important is if I need to access a certain network share because we, you've got some systems which are right into that network share and you, you can't move it because it's part of a process, but you need to access the content securely. Well, I've got access to my network share here. I've now got these four files automatically synchronized down to my device. And what happens if someone changes those internally, every time I open that application, it will synchronize the, the latest version of that file down. And it doesn't stop there. If you want to, you can enable sharing from network share connectors. So I can grab a couple of files, share by email, use the mechanism of share file to be able to share from my network shares without having to think, right, do I need to drag these files from here to into my email to be able to share them? Do I need to VPN into the company? 
Again, this is a configurable feature. You don't have to enable it by default, and it's definitely not enabled by default. I'll call it NS so we know it's from a network share. And I've got the opportunity to put controls around it. I can put a view only ability on there, or I can put one of the IRM policies if I like. So you've got that flexibility and the consistency across the different repositories to share documents in the same way. I'll leave the policies like that. Let's have a look and let's send that out. Okay. And so once that link gets shared out, uh, I'll wait for a couple of seconds because it's pausing on me at the moment. Um, so what you can do is you can also access your other repositories. So you might have um, yeah, access to uh, your OneDrive for business or even SharePoint online. And instead of going and jumping into different UIs, um, you can yeah, not liking my view only for some reason. So I might have my profile on an on-premise repository. So bear with me. So you can also support both hybrid for on-premise viewing and editing by deploying an Office Online Server 2016. That's something that I haven't got provisioned in my data center um, or in my sorry, my demo lab. So you can provision that and have a hybrid approach there. Um, Sorry, I'll just back out of that second. I just wanted to kind of jump in um, with showing you the personal cloud connectors as well. So you've got the ability to access Dropbox. And again, you might think, why do I want to do that? But sometimes you want to be bringing Dropbox data back into the organization for a particular reason. So you can enable this connector to a user for a day or so for them to sign into their account, bring some data over, and then you can destroy that access to that Dropbox. So what you can do is just say, right, grab those files, copy to share file, select the folder, and they might want to bring that data into their corporate repository. So what it does, um, it will copy that data from Dropbox over into my share file account. 